was thinking that if people could just see the way other people experience God from what they call that that spiritual presence, that presence, whatever that means to them, and beyond the dogma or the rules or the scriptures that they go by, what's the individual experience of, of these people? And how does their religion lead them or guide them to that experience? That experience that's the transcendent. So what's your experience of that reality? Have you had that experience? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Is there a way that you practice or to feel God's presence? Um, well, I'll tell you, for me, there are certain practices that I observe that are personal. I mean, that I do by myself. And there are certain times in uh, services and worship when I feel God's presence. And then um, I think there are times when I see uh, particular acts of goodness or I'm with people in their times of sorrow that I feel God's presence. I would also say there are times when I'm carrying the Torah scroll or I'm with this community in one way or another and it's it's evident to me that we're embraced by God's presence. I don't think everyone in this room feels that way. I feel that way. And, uh, and they're personal moments that aren't religious, ritual moments, but they're personal moments. Muslim mystics um, have um, also enunciated certain paths or ways of attaining higher levels of spirituality in order to feel that light of God and in order for a person to experience God directly. Um, Can a person experience God directly? Absolutely. Have you ever felt that presence? God's presence? Uh, uh, I have felt weird things, but I don't know for sure if I ever felt actual felt his presence. Uh, I don't. I I doubt it. I don't know. Have you? Yeah, I would say. I you would have? say. Yeah. yeah. But what did, did he did he say anything? Did he say hello there or something? Did he, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Not out loud. God talked to people back then. It seems like. Yeah. The, doesn't it out loud? Out loud. But he doesn't seem to talk out loud. At least nobody talks about it if he does. I think God communicates with us in different ways. I don't think God stops speaking to us. Hmm. I just think it's not... Well, the rabbi said that after the prophets, the sages said after the prophets finished, the prophetic period was over, God stopped speaking directly out loud to everyone except, uh, they said, madmen and fools and children. We can see him, we can talk to him, provided we make a spiritual advancement. We have to be qualified to see him. It's not like uh, it's impossible. We can see Lord. And have you heard him? Uh, so far, not yet. I'm not yet so high level, uh, elevated devotee, but we are trying, we are trying to reach that stage. So this is the process. These are very important steps to be undertaken in order for a person to attain what we may call the spiritual perfection, the inside of the inside, as we call it. The inside? Of the inside. Is a spiritual per perfection. Because we have three levels. The outside, which is the kind of very ritualistic, uh, superficial element which a lot of Muslims engage in. The second level is the inside, which is a kind of traveling within yourself. Uh, we try the, the path to God. But the third and the highest level is the inside of the inside. That is God himself, the center. Attaining oneness with God. You can never become God, but you can become or you can exist within his close proximity, whereby you are like stars on a sunny day. You see the sun, but the stars are also there in existence. I can't imagine what life would be like in that state of being. You, can, you cannot even talk about it. It's mm -hmm. ineffable. You can only experience it. The closest we can talk of is bliss, 
spiritual bliss. Sometimes it's intense spiritual union, uh, a kind of uh, yeah, intense experience of God. Sometimes uh, uh, so intense it can. Be, they talk about being on fire with the love mm. of God. Sometimes it's expressed in in great acts of compassion. There's a great mystery out there. You can open yourself up to it, experience some of it, but you'll never understand it. But you don't need to understand it. You just need to relate to it. Have you ever felt the presence? Especially when I'm praying, yes. Because it feels like, you know, it feels like you're really close. You're like talking to him. Like when you're praying to him, you're like really close to him. It just feels really good. I believe God is necessarily up in the sky. I kind of believe he's like a piece of your heart. I find uh, God's presence often at Eucharist, when I'm presiding at Eucharist, and I can see the congregation, and I know their stories, and I know the troubles they're having in life, or the joys they're experiencing in life, or the fears, or the illnesses they've dealt with. And yet here they come, they gather together uh, to celebrate God in their lives. I just would love to see the world just come together. Could you imagine how wonderful? That's what it was meant to be. That's the way it was meant to be. And just think, if every one of us helped someone else, it just wouldn't be any problems, you know? You know, I, I dream that life, you know, I just, and I have such love for people.